Okay, here's the uh, double angle formula. If you look at the sine formula here and replace the beta with alpha, then you get the exact same copy, sine alpha and cosine of two copies. And if you look at the uh, addition formula of a cosine, you have cosine alpha and cosine alpha. That's why you have cosine squared alpha. Sine alpha and sine alpha, so you get sine squared alpha. So this first version of cosine 2 alpha falls easily from addition formula, but you can rewrite this one identically with the two other versions. So what theorem do we use to identically write this version to the other two? Pythagorean identities. Cosine squared plus sine squared being one, um, you can use that to kind of rewrite one of these cosine squared or sine squared. Then you arrive in here. Okay? So these were called the double angle uh, formula. Yes. The formula that it is not solving problem is called the formula. So it has it is in this form. <coughs> so it's that result is not wrong, but that's not the double angle formula. The double angle formula is this. So you, you did some homework problem. So today is um it's basically application of this cosine two alpha. It has these three different versions. That's a nice application. So first, I'm going to write it in a slightly different way. First one is going to be this two cosine squared alpha minus one. I'm going backward. So what's the identical expression of two cosine squared alpha minus one? It's cosine two alpha, right? Doing like a factoring, um, but it's not really factoring, it's just doing things different way. So let me look at it this way. Cosine alpha squared is a cosine alpha and it's multiplied. Algebraically simple, but if you want to think about what happens to the graph, it could be slightly tricky. And you end up in multiplying things when you solve equations from physics and engineering problem and things like that. But right inside says it's simply cosine of two alpha. We understand very. Um, it's nice. This is a nice thing about this cosine two alpha. What is the transformation um, that takes this cosine alpha to cosine of two alpha? What kind of transformation is this? Horizontal transformation or vertical transformation? So let's see. Um, what my question is that if you want to compare this one with a cosine alpha, what kind of transformation is it? Horizontal, or vertical. Alpha is the main variable, so it's horizontal, right? Two is multiplied to alpha, so it's going to be stretch or shrinking. So if the factor multiplied here is a two, is that stretch or shrinking? Is it shrinking? Yeah. So this one is really reflecting the frequency. If it's higher number, higher frequency, we'll see a lot more up and down <coughs> between there. So this is um, just simply horizontal shrinking and here you see a lot more up and down so this is really the pure wave remember there's a omega times alpha omega really tells you the frequency in there so it's algebraically simple but it's uh, tricky to understand how the graph looks like right hand side it is something we understand pure wave it's, uh, this wave of what amplitude here what is the amplitude of this wave cosine to alpha one is multiplied and what is the period pi right two pi divided by two is a pi and period gets shorter and shorter as this one get larger and larger and frequency get higher and higher all right that's one simple algebraic thing that falls out of here but that's the meaning of this one here's some identical expression that is much better information pure wave in there how about one minus two times the sine squared alpha what is this one? Cosine of... Are you sure? Yes, this is cosine of 2 alpha. 1 minus <laughs> 2 times sine squared alpha. It's the same thing, right? It's the same thing, so it turned out like this. All right, that's, you know, you just write in a different way, and we interpret a different thing, and that's interesting. So we actually decided to use this one. Okay, why don't we actually solve this thing for... By looking at this first formula, let's see if we can solve it. Cosine squared alpha. 
whenever I see cosine squared alpha, I can change it in terms of cosine 2 alpha. So you look at this equation right here and solve for cosine squared alpha. All right? So I'm going to add 1 both sides, right? So it's going to be 1 plus cosine 2 alpha. Fair enough? And there's still 2 multiplied to cosine squared alpha. So if you divide both sides by 2, then you're going to arrive at here. That good? That's the cosine squared alpha. All right. This is the formula. 1 minus 2 times sine squared alpha is a cosine 2 alpha. So let's isolate sine squared alpha. All right. Let's do this one together. I will subtract 1 from both sides. So that will give us negative 2. Sine squared alpha is um, negative 1 plus cosine 2 alpha. Kind of landed like this so that it's compared to this one in here. That makes sense? You look at this formula, subtract both sides um, with negative 1. Then negative 2 is multiplied to sine squared. This one goes to the other side, become negative 1. So how do you isolate this one? Divide by negative 2. So that's going to be sine squared, alpha, negative 2 down there, negative 1 plus cosine 2 alpha. Right? But they usually make this one a positive here. So if you multiply negative in the denominator, you have 2. And this 1 changes to positive 1. Negative 1 changes to positive 1. This 1 becomes negative. Cosine 2 alpha. So if you put these two things like this, they look a lot like each other. 1 plus cosine 2 alpha. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine 2 alpha. Right? Yeah. So what this one says is that if you have cosine alpha multiplied to to itself, then you can change it into pure wave like this. Or it's a cosine to the first power. This is a cosine to the second power, right? And this is sine to the second power. This is cosine to the first power. So they call this one power lowering formula. So if you have cosine alpha squared, and instead of that high power, you can actually deal with the first power. It has good advantage in the calculus when you calculate things. So we're going to call that power lowering formula. We're not going to consider tangent, just this one, just uh, because um, periodic waves analysis uh, analyze in terms of sine and cosine, that's sufficient. So that's another set of formula you have to know. <laughs> right? Power lowering formula. So addition formula goes to double angle formula, right? Now, in that double angle formula, it's cosine 2 alpha is a special purpose, and we just turn that cosine 2 alpha formula into a power lowering formula. Does that make sense? So let me show you the picture here. Addition formula, double angle formula, in that special double angle formula, cosine 2 alpha, is rewritten into something called power lowering formula. All right? So here's an example. Now, we started with the sine squared. Sine t pure wave is squared and multiplied to another square of a wave, cosine squared t. And we do some algebra using basically addition formula, right? But the different versions of that, and then we got down to here. What is the advantage of this one is that we know how this one looks like. This is a pure wave. Why is that? With amplitude 1 eighth and frequency whatever the reciprocal the period and that's a pure wave in there, right? Yeah. What about 1 eighth? What does that mean? It's a vertical shift, right? So we understand this one very well. So here is some complicated algebra, algebra of the curves. Now we analyze it as a what? Um, nice decomposition of a pure wave. Just like a sunlight, you go through the prism, it shows you what kind of pure waves involved in that light in there. So that's what just interpretation of that. Here's a um, periodic function. You can see as t goes from 0 to 2 pi, it always repeats. Sine t repeats and cosine t repeats. So this whole thing is 
periodic function and it is analyzed into like that. So this is general theory. If you're looking at the periodic function, with the period the 0 to 2 pi, and you can always turn this one into a following shape. In this one here, like algebra, you know, if this periodic function that is made out of an algebra of a sine t and cosine t like that, even um, involving 2t or 3t in there, um, there are some constants just like 1 eighth and some coefficient for amplitude and cosine of omega 1t that shows up. And this is a simple example, so only one part is involved, and you can imagine that there's more and more pure waves kicking in and different amplitude and different frequency going in and there n n of them involved in with a different frequency in general case it turns out if if you look at more complicated cases it turns out it, you also have to use a sine as well so it's a different coefficient b1 sine of omega 1 um, t that omega is actually the same Interesting enough, B2 is different, but this frequency part is the same, so that shows up with, in pair with the sine part, like that, period. Any periodic function, however it's multiplied to each other like that, it can be always written in this form. So let's look at this here. This is a vertical shift. This is a pure wave. This is another pure wave. If you combine them all together, and it becomes that original thing in there. So this is the frequency decomposition. This mathematical analysis of frequency de decomposition. Okay? So let's look at some example. This was cosine to the fourth and the sine squared. That was uh, another example. sine squared t. Alright? As this power gets higher and it requires more calculation and you will see at the end it requires a little bit of a clever trick to finish up this calculation. Um, there are multiple different ways to write this one as a sum of pure waves. Alright? And but it is really nice part of the theorem. Doesn't matter how you do it and who does it? Always you end up at this shape of answer, and all of our answer is going to be exactly the same. Usually, if you deal with the trigonometric expression, there is no unique way to express it, right? Even in the back of the answer and web assigned answer, always a slightly different. But if you write it into this form, there is no other version. This is only one version. If um, to all with all the answers, omega one and omega two, it's going to be all the same. Whoever does it. So, we're looking at this periodic function, and we're going to turn this into a uh, sum of pure wave. And I'm taking a one route, but whoever does it is going to be the same answer, exactly the same coefficient you'll encounter. All right? So I'm taking this method, um, this this path, so that it reduces the computation a little bit. So first thing I notice is that cosine to the f um, squared is uh, separated out sine squared. All right? Isn't that what we just did here? Cosine squared times the sine squared t? Right? Something we just did. I think that's a mess. All right. So we worked on that. So it's a cosine. So what if, what if we didn't work? We just happen to have this problem and we don't have any prior result in there. Still, um, I realize that this cosine t and sine t, that's very nice. So it's a cosine squared t times, I'm, gr I'm grouping it in this way, sine t times a cosine t. Well, cosine t times sine t is the same thing, right? And put it under the square power like that. I'm doing that because I realize that I remember some, there's some formula it has sine t times a cosine t. Anybody remember? It was written down today. There was some formula that involves sine t times the cosine t. Wow. 
point. So here's a, anybody remember there's a two times a sine t times a cosine t. Sine, sine 2 theta, that's correct. Yeah, so I'm going to write that down. Sine 2t is that inside in there. Right? So, but they don't have a 2, so I'm going to solve it for. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Then it's going to be 1 half times sine 2t, right? Sine 2t is a pure wave. It's good. The product of two pure waves became one pure wave, right? One half. So I can replace the sine two, sine times cosine with this pure wave. So this one becomes a cosine squared t times this whole thing is now one half sine two t. Is that right? And squared. So we have one fourth coming out. This one half is squared. And cosine squared to t times sine of square 2t. Okay. So we have squared, so let's keep lowering the power. One fourth. How about cosine squared t? But you have an idea to how to change that square power to the first power? Divide by 2? Right? What is it? One plus cosine is a plus, right? Cosine of what angle? Two t. That's right. Here's a two t. That's cosine squared part. How about sine squared? I want you to treat that one as whole thing as a u in there. Then you see that was also something divided by two there, right? Sine squared is 1 minus, right? Cosine of 2 times that. So is that going to be 4 times t? Right? It's going to be 4 times t. Because inside angle is u. So it's going to be 2 times u. 2 times u is 4 times t. Good? So this one altogether is going to be 4 and 4. Is that, is that 16th? 1 plus cosine 2t times 1 minus cosine 4t. So this is not going to be a plus b, a minus b, right? Because this b and that b is different. But if you multiply out, and we have a lot of pure wave coming out. So here's a 1 16th. Right? So I'm going to multiply it. 1 is multiplied to 1. What do you get? 1 there. Is that right? And 1 is also multiplied to where? Negative cosine t. So it's going to pick up negative cosine 4t. So that's very nice. 1 is vertical shift. Cosine 4t is a pure wave. It summons a pure wave. How about this one multiplied here? So that's going to be positive cosine 2t. Is that right? That's a pure wave. Now, these two things are multiplied and give you negative cosine 2t times cosine 4t. Like that. Looks very nice. But still, this pure wave is multiplied to the other pure wave there. Right? So next uh, goal is that, can we still write this one? There's no square or anything, but can we still write this one? as a uh, sum of two pure waves, right? Okay. So these are, you know, studied hundreds of years by people and they just all figured out this trick. So you will see that trick. It's a 2t and 4t, right? They realize that, hey, that is a part of addition formula of a cosine. If you just look at it here, doesn't that something like that shows up in addition formula? So they look at it here. All right. Notice, it's a magic word, cosine of addition formula. If you look at these two angles, you will see this 4t and 2t. So, so 4t, the larger angle first. That's easier to every, for everything. 
I'm looking at a cosine of 40 plus 2t. What is it? Cosine of 6t, right? But as you apply addition formula, you have cosine of 40, is that right? Times cosine of what? 2t. Hey, we have that right there. We want to isolate that, right? But what is the remaining part of the formula? Sine of 4t times sine of 2t. Ha, huh, it's just sitting right there. Then I'm looking at nice pure wave, cosine 6t, right? So next trick is that what about the difference? 4t minus 2t. Okay. Then what is it? Cosine of 4t times cosine of 2t again. This guy appeared again, but it switched the sign to positive. Remember? Right? And here it's going to be sine of 4t times the sine of 2t. Is that right? What we want is a sine 4t cosine 2t. We don't want sine 4t sine 2t, right? But they happen to appear an opposite sign. And left-hand side is pure wave, cosine 6t, cosine 2t, right? How do you get rid of this thing? What do we do? This is a plus and minus. We add them together and they disappear, right? You add side by side, what do you have in the left-hand side? Which one is that cosine of what t? Together, 6t, right? We're adding side by side. What about this one in here? Cosine of which angle? 2t. How about this one in here? They're exactly the same, so we have two copies of it. Is that right? Cosine 4t, cosine 2t. And what happened to these two terms? They cancel and disappear. Now, we have this target cosine 40 times cosine 2, the same thing as cosine 2 times cosine 40. And if you divide both sides by 2, we have a version that is sum of pure waves, right? And that's in that nice. Here's cosine 40 times cosine 2t is now 1 half times cosine 60 plus 1 half times cosine 2t. So that's the pure wave, right? And they're going back into that formula. So here it is, going back. Our original problem was cosine to the fourth t times the sine squared t. This is supposed to be periodic function. We worked out to this version here. I'm going to multiply out all the, I, I'll, I'll leave it 16 there. 16 there, 1 minus cosine 4t plus cosine 2t minus this product cosine on uh, 2t and cosine 4t there we worked it out so that is now written as a pure wave like this so that is replaced by a negative cosine 6t the negative distributes is negative half cosine 2t so inside there, you can see these are all pure waves. It's a frequency decomposition of a thing that we saw. Yes. Now we have the same term, one full copy of cosine 2t, negative one half. Of. So together they become what? Positive one half of cosine 2t, is that right? Then everything else is a different frequency. So we leave it at that. But we're going to now distribute the 1 16th, so it really looks like frequency decomposition. 1 16th, um, the lowest frequency is a 2t there, right? But now it's a positive. Is that right? Positive? Yeah, positive. So the positive, 1 half down there is a 32 cosine 2t. Agree? Next highest frequency is a negative, so it's negative 116 cosine 40. Next highest frequency is 60, but there's 2 in the denominator, so it's going to be 32. Negative 32 
cosine 6t. Now we did it. The cosine to the 4t times the sine squared t is frequency decomposition is this one. A little bit of vertical shift up there. And these are the amplitude that are involved. And these are the pure waves that is involved. OK? I'm showing you that frequency decomposition uh, using Mathematica in here. That's code, um, original version. It's this decomposed version. And it's like that. And there, are, if you ask Mathematica to do that automatically, if you just type this one in, and it's going to find it quickly. There's a command to actually go from here to there really quickly. I am, it's called product sum formula. This is not going to be on the test, but in that section, they go through many, many different formula, double angle formula, half angle formula, product sum formula. And this is um, kind of algebra of these waves, important part. So you can see any, any product of uh, 2t and 8t, you can look at this addition and subtraction and you can isolate, add and subtract. You can write them down into that. And if you happen to look, be looking at some periodic function that is showing in nature, not it, which is not written neatly like this algebraically, you can still write it like this, but there's a possibility that it doesn't end at after end point. It goes to forever. Um, so those are called free analysis. It's a very, very important part of mathematics and science. All right. So I'm going to save this formula in here and continue after having two minutes break from now. Let's, um, let's pretend that was two minutes, okay? And I continue <laughs> to the next part. <laughs> so there is the addition formula, and double angle formula is the follows like this. And we look at this cosine 2 alpha and turn it into uh, something called power lowering formula. Immediately, that consequence of this power lowering formula is some of the algebra becomes, a, you know, some of pure waves. Very nice. Um, next thing is called double ang um, half angle formula. So what I want to do to this formula here, we're looking at double angle formula. So you'll, you'll be asked to state the double angle formula and then you look at your addition and uh, subtraction formula, you know, do that from here. Double angle formula is written somewhere, then you're going to say that derive the power lowering formula and then you look at your double angle formula and you can deduce it from there and so on. Okay, so it's going to be written by you in in your test answer, and you can use it to answer other questions. All right, here, power lowering formula becomes, again, um, half angle formula. So I want you to set theta to be 2 alpha. You see 2 alpha there? Call that one just a theta. Relatively, what is alpha then, which is appearing on the left-hand side? What is it? Theta over 2, right? If you call this 2 alpha as one quantity, relatively alpha is half of that quantity. Makes perfect sense, right? So I'm going to restate this power lowering formula down here. So cosine squared theta, is that right? That's what left hand side is. Right hand side is 1 plus cosine of, I was wrong, this is alpha. Sorry about this, made a mistake. Right hand side first. I'm going to write right hand side first. Right hand side is 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2, right? Left hand side is a cosine squared. What is the angle? It's alpha, and alpha is now theta over 2. So theta over 2. So just simply rewriting um, with a new letter, it becomes this. Sine squared theta over 2. It's going to be 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. Power lowering formula is like this, okay? But now it's a half angle formula. All right. Is that 
you just put the square root both sides. So cosine, let, let me do the sine first. Sine theta over 2. How are we going to calculate sine theta over 2? Sine theta over 2 is here, right? How do you isolate sine theta over 2? Just put the square root. So it's the square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. Is that right? But why is there space here? Whenever you put square to the square root to the square, you always put plus minus, right? Depending on what the theta is, sine theta over two will pick up some positive and negative numbers. So this square root of without it is always going to be a positive number. So you have to do this. About cosine of theta over two. So cosine is over here. I'm going to put the square root plus minus square root of one plus cosine theta divided by 2 square root. This is called half angle formula. How do we know it's a plus or minus? Usually you have an idea about where the theta is. If it is in the first quadrant, if theta over 2 is in the first quadrant, positive. If theta over 2 is a negative, fourth quadrant, sine will be negative, things like that. But in general, this is the best notation. Does that make sense? All right. So here's an interpretation of this formula. If you know cosine theta, uh, theta value, like cosine 60 and cosine 15, using this formula, you can calculate half of that angle. Right? So let's start with an example. So cosine of 60 degree. Who remembers cosine of 60 degree? Special triangle, picture that in your mind, that tall triangle 60, cosine adjacent, hypotenuse, what is the value? One half. One half, right? Right, one half. All right. Now, you know cosine 60 degree, and this formula is saying you can calculate half of that angle. What is it? 30 degree, right? But we already know 30 degree. But I'm going to use this one formula. To see what happened. Okay? So 60 degree, you have that information. Then we're entering half of that 60 degree. Is that right? According to that formula. It's going to be square root of cosine of what angle? 60 degree. If you know 60 degree, you can calculate half of it. So that. I wrote down this formula, half angle formula, directly like this. Instead of theta, I plug in 60. Now you know theta over 2. This is 30 degree, right? Positive or negative? Cosine 30 degree? Positive. First quadrant, right? So you can put plus in there. You know it's actually positive. Now you continue. You replace that cosine 60 with uh, what we know. What is cosine 60? One half. So it's one half. So this formula says cosine of 60 divided by 2, 30 degree, it's this value right here. Right? So how are you going to simplify inside? If you see denominator, you can multiply that denominator. Top and bottom, it's going to clear the denominator. So what, so what do you see in the numerator? 2 is distributed, right? So you get 2 plus 1. You see that? 2 is distributed, 2 and plus 1. Denominator is 4, right? So this is root 3 divided by root 4, which is 2. Cosine 30 degree is root 3 over 2. So we obtained that formula. But you can keep doing this. 30 degree Split in half, what is it? 15 degree. 15 degree split in half. 7 point something. That's split in half. You can keep doing this. All right? So I'm going to pretend at this point that we're going back to ancient time. We don't have a calculator. But you can certainly approximate this root 3 over 2. Suppose you are the, you know, the first person who write down these values of this thing somewhere. So let's pretend that. So I'm going to calculate, for example, the root 3 
Uh, where's the button? Divide by 2. That would be 0 0.8660. So it's a 0 0.8660. But let's say that you're carrying 10 more digits. You're making this book of you know, cosine values that probably existed a long time ago. All right, let's do the next one. The cosine 15 degree, so you divide this 30 degree by 2. That is 15 degrees, it's still positive, is that right? Still positive. Square root of 1 plus that value there, right? So what is that cosine? 30 degree? Divide by 2. So that is the half angle formula again. Okay? So what is cosine 30? Point eight six six zero. Suppose we got that by, you know, hand calculation period where it doesn't exist. 660 divided by 2. Now you calculate these decimals and kind of uh, put a square root and you calculate this one again. So I'm pretending that we're doing this by hand. So 1 plus uh, previous solution which is 0 0.860. So that's that. And this one divided by 2. So that will be inside. And I'm putting the square root there. So it turns out it's 0 0.9659. It's 0.9659. So let me write that down. Cosine of what degree is that? Right. 15 degree is a 0 0.9659. Okay. All right. What is next? Is this 15 degree divided by 2? That's going to be 7.5. And that's going to be square root of 1 plus 0.9655. Is that right? Divided by 2. That's going to be the value. So you do that again. The calculator. Let's see. 1 plus the previous answer. Um, divided by 2. And then I put uh, square root of that answer. Turns out it's a point. Um, I think I did something wrong. Isn't that that's supposed to be closer to 1? So let me do that again. There's a point 0.9655. That's what that number, right? That's that. That one plus that one is that number, and that is ah divided by two. I think I did this one wrong. By two and put the square root. Now it's going to do it. It's an answer. Nine nine one three. So cosine of 7.5 degree is going to be 0.9913. All right. Got the idea <laughs> long time ago, right? Got the idea a long time ago. But if you have if you have, have it one more time, what is it? 3.75. Uh, if you have it one more time, is it, what is it? 1.875. Um, is that right? like that. Yeah. Suppose you got this value, cosine of 1.875 degree. We have this under control up to like 100 digits, right? By doing this calculation, taking that square root very carefully. Yeah. Then you can use this to, for example, if I, if I have a cosine of, uh, you know, 30 degree, I wonder what this cosine of, uh, you know, 32 degree is. Seems like if you add this one, it's a 31.875, that's close enough. But you can, 
refine this one value, you can see you can get closer and closer to the 32 degree, right? If you have another half it, another half it is a very tiny angle. So you can use that to kind of calculate this type of thing. So you can see, all right, cosine of 30 degree is um, approximately 30 plus 1.875 degree in there. That's a cosine 31.874.5, close enough to 32 degree, right? So what do we do from here? What formula are we using? Additional formula. There's a cosine of 30 degree, and we have that cosine of 1.875 degree minus sine of 30 degree, and sine of 1.875 degree. They have an approximate value to that. So you can create a very nice table of starting from 30 and 31 degree and 32 degree, then you can use that in the table. That is one application of half angle formula to approximate various different values of a cosine using that. Um, if, you, if you can calculate square root, and that's one way. All right, so how people these days calculate this, how you know, those uh, company who have cosine thing built in the calculator. You will learn this one in Calculus 2. At the end of Calculus 2, at the end of a one variable calculus. And by the time when you reach this um, subject, um, it uses so many things it's like it's epitome of pretty much everything. At to that stage, you learn about mathematics is used all together. It's really, really beautiful at that at that stage. But they come up with this formula: cosine of t. Is there a better way to calculate this than what I just introduced in here? Right? It's it's you can see that idea. But it's very very difficult. So they came up with this. A better formula. If you want approximate value of cosine t, following is what you're going to do, and it guarantees as you do more and more of this procedure, and you get closer and closer to the actual value of cosine t. It starts with one, simple, and t has to be in radian, not 60 degree. It has to be pi over three and things like that. Next thing you do is a negative t squared. T squared is easy, right? You multiply two numbers, and you divide it by 2. 1 times 2, that'll show you the pattern. 1 times 2 is 2, right? Next one is the even power t to the 4th. You can do that to the 4th. But what's in the denominator is that 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. That is 60 something, 64. Next thing you're going to do is that you subtract and raise your angle to the 8th power and divided by 1 times, and 2 times, and 3 times, and 4 times, and 8 is not correct. That was the 6th power. Sorry about this. You have to go to his 6th power. 5 times 6. This notation, 1 times product of all the way up to 6, is denoted simply by 6 and exclamation mark. It reads 6 factorial. And your calculator usually has that symbol. So 6 factorial is going to calculate this number. What is the next power? It's the eighth now, right? What's the denominator? Eight factorial, product of all integers up to positive integer up to eight. What is the next one? T to the tenth power and divided by ten factorial. You see the pattern? If you keep doing this, this value, which only involves arithmetic, no calculation of a square root or anything, addition, multiplication, and division, right? If you keep doing that, your value is going to be closer and closer and closer to the cosine t value. How beautiful is this formula here, right hand side, simple, simple arithmetic calculation. And if you keep doing that, it guarantees that it's going to, it's going to show you the cosine. This cosine t known as a, not just an irrational, is a transcendental number. It's very, very difficult to calculate. Now it reveals a pattern of um, arithmetic. This idea allows us to calculate this mysterious number often. If you look at the decimal expansion, pi over 4 has no pattern in there. That's why it's called irrational number, right? 
But they found this using this idea of looking at functions, they found a pattern in the pi over 2. The pattern is the following. 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth. You see the pattern? Reciprocal of odd integer and alternating like this. You go forever. If you keep doing that, what happened? Where are you arriving at? Pi over 4. So here's you go one unit, one third unit back, and go one fifth unit forward, one seventh unit backward, one ninth unit forward, one eleventh unit <laughs> backward, one thirteenth unit go forward. If you keep doing that forever, where's your final destination? Pi over four. And they discover this. And there is this beautiful pattern of unfolding this pi over four in this way. And E and square root 2, all this decimal digit has no pattern, but they found this beautiful pattern of adding simple fraction number and of eventually arriving to the pi over 4. There's this clear pattern showed up. All right? From that lonely triangle, we got to this beautiful um, uh, uh, the formulas that is discovered using this idea. All right? And as you some more in calculus and differential equation and complex variables and you will keep seeing this sine and cosine showing up and you will encounter even more beautiful formulas but 